Um, Brenda Harrelson, where's she at? Harrelson, sorry, where's she at? She had a testimony this morning that Pastor told me about. Would you come and? I was telling Pastor Bob this morning, several months ago, we were having a service here. I can't remember whether it was on Wednesday night, Sunday night, or whether it was one of the Mondays that we had come down to pray. But I came down here to the altar, and my heart was just heavy. I don't know why, and I didn't even know what I was had come down to pray for. But uh, I just started weeping. And I said, Father, break my heart for what breaks yours. Amen. 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 And he did. <laughs> well, it seemed like when anybody that I thought was struggling or hurting, or lonely, or depressed, or anything that they were going through, their name would come to my mind, and I'd just start weeping. It didn't matter where I was. I could have been in Walmart just crying, and <laughs> nobody knew what I was crying about. But uh, last Sunday, Patty came to me, and... She said, I've got a present for you. She said, I've got this necklace. And it was made by a little girl over in India. And she told me her name. And she said, they're prayer beads. And she said, when we got ready to leave, she got missing. And they don't know where she is. And that broke my heart. <laughs> and hearing Molly talk this morning... And I can feel her heart breaking for these children. That we don't know what's happening to them. We don't know how they're being treated. And all we can do is pray. And just ask God to put his angels around them and protect them. I know that we're not in slavery here like they are over there. But in a sense, we are in slavery. We are slavery to what the world has put in before us. We're making things of this world our gods. Yep. Yep. And the thing is, the sad part of it is, they're not seeing, they're not hearing. They don't know. They're fighting a spiritual battle. They think they're fighting against each other. But it's Satan that they're fighting. It's a different type of war over here. But it's just as strong. And I know they're fighting a spiritual war over there also. But God has put it on my heart so heavy to let them know. Speak to them. If you have family members that are hurting, that are lost, that are straying, neighbors, anybody that you know that you meet up with, let them know. I don't want the rocks to cry out for me. Amen. Amen. And yes, it does hurt when your heart is broken for anything. It hurts. You hurt physically. But if that's what it takes to win a soul, yes. Yes. I want to do that. <laughs> so if God's breaking my heart, <laughs> if I can bring one person to him, it's worth it. <laughs> Amen. Absolutely. Our hearts need to be broken about what God's heart is broken for. And those are the lost and the dying that are around us every day. Even in our families. 
And when we capture the heartbeat of God, when we capture the, the thing that He longs for the most is to be with His children, and we will call out to God for that and let Him stoke that fire inside of us for the same thing that He longs for is when we can do amazing things. When we begin to realize that we are the hands and feet and the mouthpiece of God here on this earth to those that are around us. Amen. That's an excellent, excellent prayer. Break me, God. Break me. I've prayed that so many times in the altar. Break me, God. Break me for what breaks you. And that should be our heart's desire. To want everything that God wants. Amen. Amen. Mm. <laughs> It just resonates inside of me how powerful that word is. Lord, we just come to you and I thank you, God. Father, and I pray right now, Lord, God, that you would break our hearts. Father, that, Lord, you would break down the walls that we build with this world. Father, all the things that distract us and take our attention away from you. And God, tonight I pray that you would help us to recognize those things in our life this week as we begin to move about, God, as we begin to go back to work, as we begin to go back to school, as we begin to, to fall into the same place that we've been. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just begin to revive our spirits, Lord. God, to step back from the things that are meaningless in life, but God, to look and take time to dig into your word, take time to dig into your presence, God, because there is a lost and dying world that is all around us, Lord. And God, we need to be broken in the way that you are for them. Lord, that we don't get lost in the meaninglessness stuff in life that has no eternal value. God, I pray, Lord, that your heartbeat would be ours. Stir us up once again, oh Lord, to be your hands and feet, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. (laughs) Let that be your prayer this week. God, break me for what breaks you. Because like she said, there's so many things in life that will capture our attention and distract us from where God wants us to be and what God wants us to do. And sometimes it just takes us to realize what those things, you ever, you ever been uh, through a week or a month or a spell and all of a sudden you begin to do something and you realize this has become my life. Right? I remember there was, a <laughs> there was a series that was on Netflix, and me and my wife began to watch it. And it was very interesting. And the next thing you know, we're watching episode after episode after episode. And then we both looked at each other and said, you know what? We've spent the last two days, probably four hours out of the day, watching this TV series. We said, we got we to gotta stop. we got to hit the brakes. Because those are the little things that you don't even think about that will just begin to distract you from seeking out God. And seeking out His Word, uh, the most important thing to us should be to be in the presence of the Lord. Every day, every moment, we should be hungry for that. And it doesn't mean that you have to be on your knees in some elaborate prayer. It just means communicating with God every chance that you get. We need to be hungry for more of that. Because when we do... We can become powerful through the Holy Spirit. As God begins to reveal things, as God begins to speak to us, we had a great time at youth convention this weekend. And, uh, man, it was powerful. It was, it was such a good time to, to worship and to see 1,200 students uh, up in the altars with their arms raised and crying out. And, and the altar calls that were given as the students came up. And, and they asked the leaders the last night just to come and just to pray for those students. And he was talking about them being a generation that will go out and do something for God. And I wrestle with some of that sometimes, and, and I sat there, and I'm looking, and one part of me is saying, God, all of this, it, will anything come out of it? Because I've seen camps, and I've seen youth conventions, and youth revivals, and the students get pumped up, and they get going, but then after a week or two, it's, it's just gone. 
And so I struggle with that, and I watch them, and I'm like, God, are we building up a hype? Is it just an event, or is this something that could be everlasting? And then God spoke to me and said, you know what? If it's just for one that it changes their life forever, it's worth it all. And I stopped, and I stood back, and I said, you're absolutely right. I said, God, because this generation today, you know, I, I talk to them all the time, and, and, and this is what you see. This is where they're at. This is their life right here on this. And I say, guys, what is what a value, eternal value does this have? I said, if you were to weigh the scales of life, and I was to ask you how much time you spent on this or TV or games last week and how much time you spent in prayer and reading, which way would the scales tip? But that's not just for students, that's for all of us. Because it's so easy for us to get distracted with work and life. It's so easy with us to get distracted with family. Now listen, those things are important. I'm not saying they're not. But the most important thing to a Christian should be our relationship with Jesus Christ. That we should step back from those things and search and seek God's presence more than anything else. And I just encourage you this week with that word to just do that. To step back and take a moment this week to just make sure that we're digging into God. Because I think a lot of churches today are becoming powerless. Because we it's so easy to run through the motions and to run through routine. There's a a great pastor, Pat Slatchline, that I love to listen to. and, And just an anointed man of God. And uh, he had a sermon. Every time I mow my grass, I'll pull out my phone and I'll download a podcast from somebody, uh, some kind of sermon. And as I'm out there mowing, man, I'm just preaching along with them and getting all these, I'm just, you know, all these things are flowing through my head. And, and he hit the, one of the sermons that he preaches now that he goes around, he's a, an evangelist, is, is the church has fired the Holy Spirit. And it is something that if, if you get to listen to that message, will just cut your heart. Because he says, we've gotten so good at doing church without the Holy Spirit. And he talks at the end, he always brings a team of students that are part of his ministry that he trains and disciples and they go out. And at the end, he, was, he ended up doing this with a, a, like an interview. That one of the students was the Holy Spirit and they began to interview with the church. And they said, well, you know, we, what do you want to do? Well, I would like to do this. Well, hang on a minute. You know, we, we got time restraints. We can't do that. Well, I want to do this. Well, hang on a minute. We don't want to offend nobody. We can't. We don't want that. We, we, don't, we, don't, we don't need you here is what they were saying to the Holy Spirit. And so many churches today have gotten into that place where let's just do church. But it ain't about the church. It's about God's Spirit in the church. Amen. And so I just encourage you again. Well, that's the title of my message. Encouraging. I started a little series uh, that I'm going to kind of continue through about staying positive. And last week we talked about being optimistic about uh, looking at the good things in life. And we went through Romans chapter 8 of, of some of the things that we have to look forward to, eternal life, that God is, goes before us, that how can we, uh, God gives us the victory. And we went through Romans chapter 8 and began to talk about that and how we could stay positive through uh, uh, times of trials in our lives. Well, listen, one of the things about staying positive is, is we must be encouraged. How many like to be encouraged? Yeah. Amen. Everybody likes to be encouraged. Everybody likes to, for someone to believe in them. Every, every, uh, most of the great uh, men and women of God or most of the great people in this, this world have somebody that believes in them. Somebody that will encourage them. Now listen, the, along with encouragement comes the other side. There's, there's probably a lot more that will discourage you than that will encourage you. But you have to understand is that God is all about encouragement. That God wants us to encourage one another and the body of Christ. That, you know, our words should never tear anyone down, is what the word says. That we should always be uplifting. That we should always be, you know, if if students come to me and they're like, man, Pastor Josh, I've got this great vision. And this is, I think, what God wants me to do. And and sometimes I can look at them and know, well, that's maybe not. But I don't tell them that. Because (laughs) the moment I tell them you can't do that is the moment that I could crush a dream that God placed in their heart. My job is not to tell them you can't. 
Oh, well, you know, you're not strong enough in Christ. That's not my job. My job is to encourage them. Hey, God's given you a plan. Let's, let's, let me help you. Let me encourage you. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you if you stay the course. And we all need encouragement in our life. We all need those words. You know, uh, what is encouragement? The action of giving someone support, confidence, or hope. But God was showing me this as I was running through my mind. I remember when uh, Tyler was little, and we have a little picture. When you walk in the house, you have, you know, Marcy puts up the pictures of, of our our past and different things, and he's standing there, and we're at a, we went to Galveston that weekend, and uh, we used to break away just every now and then, and uh, we'd go stay in a hotel, and we'd swim in a swimming pool, and there he is standing there, and he's got his little arm floaties on, and he's standing on the edge of the thing, you know, he's probably about this tall, two or three years old, and I just remember that, I remember that weekend, and I remember, how many of you have ever had that, with you, you standing in the water, and you're encouraging them to jump for the first time into the water, Right? And they're looking at you and they, they want to, but they're just not sure. Is this going to work? Are you going to catch me? Am I, am I going to drown? And, and so you're standing there and you're just calling out, to, come on, you can do it. You can do it. Come on, you're gonna be, it's going to be fun. You're going to love it. Come on. And we just encouraged them. And I don't know why God brought that to my memory, but God spoke this to me. He said that just like we encouraged them, just like I was encouraging my son, come on, and I did it with all three of them, come on, and, and, and challenging them, encouraged them that you can do this. And, and what they were looking for was they were looking that if I step out, that I'm going to fall into safe arms. And what God spoke to me was is that, listen, when you will step out, when in that encouragement, when God calls you and he puts that in your heart when you step out he is the one that will catch you I'm there to catch you I'm not going to drop you I'm not going to I'm not going to walk away from you I'm not going to leave you how cool would it have been for my kids when they jumped if I would ran backwards and just let them go underneath the water they would have never done it again would they but we all need encouragement in our life we need someone to tell us come on come on go This is you. You've got this. You can do it. God is an encouraging God. When we arrived in Macedonia, there was no rest for us. We faced conflict from every direction. The battles on the outside and the fear on the inside. But God who encourages those who are discouraged, encouraged us by the arrival of Titus. (laughs) But the God who encourages those, or dis, those that are discouraged. God is an encouraging God. God will use people or use things in your life to encourage you in what he's called you to do. So here's Paul, you know, and they're on their missionary journey, and, and they're, they're facing the battle, the people, the persecution from the outside, and their they're fear on the inside. He's worried about what the, what the church is, how the church is receiving what he has given them. And then all of a sudden, Titus comes along and says, man, they're longing for you to come to the church, Paul. They're longing for you to come and speak and to challenge and to grow and to teach. And he was encouraged because of what was said. Because Titus came along and told him that. Sometimes in our Christian walks and in our lives, we need somebody to do the same for us. To begin to encourage us and tell us what you are doing is a good thing. Don't let it stop. Because I'm going to tell you, I've, I've heard people and seen people that have spoken. All right, the Bible says we speak life or death. You can speak death over people. I, I've watched students through ministry through different years, and I've watched people in ministry and people in church, and they get this great vision, and it, all it takes is for one person, one person to say, that's a stupid idea. I've seen students, you know, they're just students, and they, oh, man, I think, and they're just like, that's dumb. Why would you do that? Oh, and then they back away. They kind of crumple down. Why? Because we can speak death over people. God never speaks death over us. God always speaks life. God always speaks encouragement. God knows that you can do anything through the Holy Spirit that is dwelling inside of us. And so when you begin to get discouraged or or you feel like God has called you to do something and you're trying to figure out how to get there and it seems like you just can't make it, you know what? Look to the Word because God will encourage you through that. He will encourage you through people who will come and speak life over you. Whether it be a brother or sister or it be a pastor, someone look for those people in your life. 
I love to surround myself with people who will encourage me. Now, who will be honest with me, but encourage me. That will tell me, hey, now, maybe you shouldn't do it that way. But I, I, you got a good point there. You got a good, uh, that's why I love pastor. Because I can speak with him and he'll encourage me. All right, that's good. But he'll be, you know, if I'm trying to do something dumb, he's going to tell me. What if I think if I jump off the roof for Speed the Light, it'll raise money. Well, maybe that's not a good idea. But raising money for Speed the Light is good. I think you can do it. That's the thing with our life is that we need to look to God, the encourager. We need to begin to understand that encouragement can do so many things for so many people. Three of the most, th- the three of the most encouraging things that you can do is, one, encourage others daily. But encourage one another daily as long as it is called today so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Hebrews 3.13. Encourage each other that we can live an overcoming life. Encourage each other that we can live an overcoming life. Because I'm going to tell you, there are people so bogged down in things, or maybe even sin, that they feel like there's no way that they're going to be able to climb that hill. But God is calling each one of us to look them in the face and say, you know what, you can do this. This sin doesn't hold you down. You're not chained to your sin. God's got the key to what you need. God is, God is, and and that's what Paul is saying right here. He said, listen, don't let, don't be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Encourage one another so that we can understand that Christ has given us the victory and the freedom that we need. Sometimes it's hard when people make the same mistake over and over and over and over. To stay in that encouragement mindset. You can do this. You can do this. You can do this. And then they fall. You can do this. You can do this. And then they fall. You ever been in that place or known somebody that way? But that that is what God is telling us. That we should be doing that for each other. You can do this. And we will help you do this. That's the big part. Is that we are to help each other. Their battle shouldn't be their battle alone. For brothers and sisters in Christ. Think about your, 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 your brothers and sisters, your blood brothers and sisters. If they needed something, would you not be there for them? Would you not be right there beside them? When my brother calls me and tells me, hey, I'm moving. Josh, I need help. I might not want to get up that morning, but I'm going to go. It's the same way spiritually for us. Is that there are times in our lives when we might not want to. Right? But we have to. We have to do that for each other. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Let us begin to remind and encourage each other that Christ is coming back. Woo! Come on, think about that, church. There is going to be a great day when he comes down and the trumpet sounds and God calls us home. Woo, I hope you're excited as I am tonight. Come on. Woo, think about that. What Paul is, what he's saying here, he's like, listen, uh, don't forget our day of God. Assembly together of the church. Don't forget that because most people do. Do most people not forget about church on a Sunday? But don't forget about it because, listen, I mean, you think about what happened over, over in Paris. Such a tragedy. You know, and I'm going to be honest with you, in my flesh, I'm like, when they gather in those big meetings and they're chanting death to America and death to Christians, why don't they just drop a big bomb right there? You do that a few times and you've knocked the population of them down and now they're scattered, right? That, that's what my mind is saying. But spiritually, I know that they're lost people. And that when they pass away, when they think they're doing the right thing, they're they're going to hell. And it's hard 
for me to want to have compassion for them for what they do. But I had to stop myself when I heard that and I began to read the news that we were convinced we had some downtime. And I, this anger just rises up inside of me. And all of a sudden, you know, I, I began to stop and I said, God, I pray for them. I pray that you will send someone that will pierce their hearts. Because I'm telling you, God doesn't want any of them to go to hell just like us. But they're so caught up in, the, in, in Satan's lies and the deceit of their religion that they're not able to see the truth. And we need people that will encourage that we need to understand is that one day Christ is going to ride back and he's going to draw us home together. We're going to be caught up in the clouds in the twinkling of an eye, the Bible says, and that we're going to spend eternity with God. Let us encourage each other with all the things that are happening and all the negativity that we can look at and what's happening in the world today. We need to stop and encourage ourselves that you know what? All this stuff is happening, but I know my Savior hasn't forgot about me. I know my Savior is coming back one day for me, and I am going to wait, and I'm going to be ready for that day when he comes. Amen? Think about that. We need to be encouraging each other in these times that we live in. Because it's so easy to get caught up in the negativity of life. That's not where God wants us to live. That's, as a Christian, we shouldn't live in that. We should live in the encouragement and the goodness of God. We should encourage others spiritually. Romans 1, 10 through 12 One of the things I always pray for is the opportunity, God willing, to come at last to see you. For I long to visit you so that I can bring some spiritual gift that will help you grow strong in the Lord. When we get together, I want to encourage you in your faith. But I also want to be encouraged by yours. (laughs) Think about that. Think about what Paul is saying here. He says, I want to encourage you in your faith. I want to help you. I want to grow you. I want to teach you. The word there that is used is is teachable. One of the the meanings and definitions is teachable. Is that we need to make sure that as we're walking through this life and this road together that we are encouraging each other by, by teaching the word of God to each other. Hear me tonight. If somebody has a problem or there's something tragic going on in their life, should we not be able to know how to share the word with them? We should know these things. Because when they're walking down this road and you are able to tell them, well, hey, this is what the word says. This is what God says. And you are are able to open the word of God to them. That is when you can encourage them. Because I could give you advice all day that comes from me. But the moment I begin to speak scripture is the moment that it begins to come alive. Because the Bible says the word cuts us to the bone and marrow of the joint. That It is the word of God that pierces the heart of man. I can give you my opinion all day, but my opinion matters none. Only God's. And we should be able to encourage one another daily. We should be able to instruct one another, teach one another. Because there are great things. There are a lot of men in this church that I talk to that tell me, you know what God was speaking to me? You know what God was showing me? You know what God was telling me? And I'm learning from them. The moment that we ever lose a teachable spirit is the moment we fail. There are so many uh, people that I've seen that, now not so many, but I've seen a few. They've gone to Bible college. They, man, they can talk really smart. And when I get in a conversation with them, it's almost like they, they're like, who are you? You didn't go to Bible college. You didn't, you didn't do this. You did. I remember 
Uh, there's a pastor back home named Brother Norton, and, and he was talking one day, and, and God had led him to a church, and they voted him in, and, and uh, he, he, was, uh, uh, he was from Arkansas. He didn't go to Bible college. He, uh, he, he, he uh, uh, got called in the ministry at a young age and went through the assemblies and got his credentials and, and took the, the, uh, the teaching that they had. And he said, I went to this really nice big church, and he said, the first day that I'm there, this man comes to me, and he begins to talk to me, and he says, I want to tell you something. I'm more qualified to be the pastor of this church than you are. And he, and he stepped back and he said, excuse me? And he said, I'm more qualified to be the pastor of this church than you are. I've, I've been to college. I've got a theological degree, a doctorate. I am more qualified to be the pastor of this church than you are. And he said, no, you're not. And he said, what, what makes you that? He said, I've got a doctorate. He said, oh, you've got a doctorate? And he said, yeah. He said, in what? And he said, I got a doctorate in the calling of God. He called me to this church. And if he's called me to this church, he's going to equip me to be the pastor of this church. And he said, him and that guy have been friends for many years. But we can't ever get in a place where we have an unteachable spirit. You have to be able to listen. Now, now listen to me. Don't believe everything you hear. All right? It's just like when you're sick. Don't Google your symptoms because you're going to die. Okay? I got a, my, my, the back of my jaw hurts, and you'll hear all the cancer stories and all these different things. Don't, don't Google that stuff. You can't, you can't believe everything you read on the Internet. Just like you can't believe everything that's spoken to you. The Bible says take it, test it to the Word. Make sure that it, that it is God. And I tell my youth all the time, if I'm teaching something, don't just believe me. I said, go back and study it and see if it's truth. Because if I come up here and tell you that it's okay to murder and I can put all these scriptures together and you believe and you go out and murder, you're going to be in trouble. But we can't lose an unteachable spirit. We need to be encouraged off of one another. The things that God's teaching you, tell me. And I'll tell you the things God's teaching me. Because as we begin to do that, we begin to feed off each other. And not as just one person growing, now you have two growing. It's just like when a pastor, a pastor comes up and preaches on Sunday morning. We come to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And that's what Paul is saying, that I am here to encourage you in your faith. That I want to grow you to become a stronger Christian. Because the race is only getting harder. Think about a race. When you're young, you're full of energy, man, you're good to go. But as you begin to grow older and you're not running like that, and you're, it, it's not as, you can't run that race as fast. <laughs> you, you, you let me run, you know, 100 yards, I'm done. You better call an EMT. Right? It's the same way with the world today, the way that it is going. Our race is not going to get easier. It's only going to get harder. There is going to be persecution on the church eventually here in America. There is going to be persecution on our, there already is persecution on our faith. What we stand for and what we believe. This race is not going to get easier just like it wouldn't in life. But we need each other to encourage one another so that we can finish that race the best that we can. I want to try to be running across that finish line when I get there. I don't want to stop. I don't want to take a detour. I want to continue on the path that God has laid out for me. It should be the same in our lives. Don't let someone or something stop you from where God wants you to be. Encourage yourselves. The last point here, encourage yourselves in the Lord. Encourage yourselves. In 1 Samuel 36, and I'm going to skip to the very end, it said, But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. So here's David and his men, and they've been out doing their thing, and they come, they come back to their town, and it's burnt to the ground. All their, all their wives and their children have been taken captive. And all of a sudden, you know, David says they begin to mourn. It says they wept for three. They wept until they couldn't cry anymore. And here's, you imagine being a leader, and that's happened to the people that you lead. And all of a sudden, the people begin, he begins to hear uh, things of them saying, we need to stone David. We need to take him, we need to kill him. 
And then all of a sudden, David turns, and what does it do? He says that he encouraged himself in the Lord. There are going to be times in our lives where there is no one that can encourage you but God. There are going to be times in your walk and in your life and the things that you go through that you are going to have to lock yourself in your prayer closet and you're going to have to pray until you get the victory. There was a pastor one time that spoke, an evangelist, and he, uh, when he was younger, in his, in his early 20s, they had the big furnace downstairs to, that they would have to go down, he said, and light and fire it up to heat their house. He said the furnace had went out, and he went down there, and, and uh, he was trying to put it back together, and, and somehow, I don't know how it was, it blew up in his face. And he said, it was, uh, he said, I reached down, and I can almost feel my face melting into my hands. He said, I began to scream, and I fell backwards, and, and he said, my family rushed down in there, and they, they began to look at me, and they're like, we need to go to the hospital. Now, I don't encourage this, but he said, no, take me to my room. And he had pictures, and he showed us these pictures of his face. It, was just, it looked like it had melted. And he said, I told my family... God's going to heal me. He said, I walked into my room and I shut the door. And he said, I don't want anybody in this room, nobody, until I come out. And he said, I sat in there and I began to pray to God. He said he prayed for three days and three nights straight. He said, when I walked out of that room, he said, God had restored my face. And you, you could see there were no burn marks. There was no scarring. There was nothing. And I wouldn't have believed it if I didn't see the pictures of his face when it happened. He said, I didn't want anybody that had doubt in that room. He said, I knew that God was going to heal me. I believed it, and I prayed it, and I encouraged myself that, God, you are my healer. Now, listen, I'm not saying if you burn your face off to do that. But... <laughs> I don't want, I don't, what Pastor Josh said, right? But listen to me. He he said, I had to get in there alone because I knew that my family was going to tell me, we need to get you to the hospital. This is not good. This is bad. He said, but I heard the Lord speak when I reached down saying, I will heal you if you believe in me. He said, so I shut the door and I would not allow anyone in, no doubt, in that room. And he said, I prayed for three days, three nights. And he said, my skin was as smooth as a baby's skin when I came out of that room. It was just a miracle. It was one of those things that you hear and you're just like, wow. God can do those things. But there are going to be times in your life where you have to do the same thing. Where you have to shut the naysayers out. And you have to encourage yourself in God. Because listen, David went and it said that he encouraged himself in the Lord. And you know what the Lord, he said, God, what what do I do? Should I chase after them? What, What These people are wanting to stone me. They're wanting to kill me. And God told him, go and pursue them. And without fail, you will recover all. You will recover everything that was taken from you. There are going to be moments in your life where you feel like the rug has been pulled out from under you. But know that God will restore everything that you have need of. That he will never fail you. That he will never forget you. But David got alone with God and strengthened himself. That word encouraged right there is that strengthened word again. That he strengthened. It's like when you lift weights, right? Right? And as you begin to lift weights, you get stronger and stronger and stronger. It's the same with God. We need to exercise our spiritual muscles in our life. The more that we can get alone, the more that we can pray, the more that we can seek after God, the stronger that we become in our faith. Our faith must grow. It will grow in God whenever you are chasing after Him. My faith in God has grown so much just by the things that He has done for me in my life. So when I get into a a situation, I'm like, you know what? I know God can get me through this. I know that God can lead me out on the other side because he's done this for me, he's done this for me, and he's done this for me. We need to encourage ourselves in the Lord at times to seek God's face, 
to seek his answers. Because listen to me, you got to be careful who you ask advice from. Because not all people will give you good advice, even Christians. When a Christian gives you advice, pray about it and see if it lines up. Just like a prophet, how do we test a prophet when he prophesies? Through the word and if it happens. It's the same way with people who tell you things. Make sure it lines up with God. A lot of times when somebody speaks to you, it's going to be confirmation of what's already inside of you. Don't look for the advice of men. Look for the advice of God. You know, we want to be, uh, we want people to uh, speak life into us a lot, you know, especially with students. I got a message that I'm putting together, the like button, because they want to be socially accepted. So they, they do all these different things waiting for people to hit their like button on Twitter or on Facebook. To say, hey, I like those things, but hey, it doesn't matter about their opinion. It doesn't matter. It only matters what God says about you. Encourage yourself in the one that is greater than everyone else. Because men can fail. You can have the great, some of the greatest godliest men that have ever preached the gospel have fallen. Don't just put your trust and faith in people. Put it in God. Make sure that what they're telling you lines up with the word. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Encourage yourself through prayer. Encourage yourself through reading. Because you know those times that, I, that, that I've been through things and I read the Bible and all of a sudden God just, you know how the scripture almost jumps off the page at you? You ever had that happen? You're reading and it feels like it's 3D and it just, whoosh. and I'll, I'll be going through something and I'll sit down and I'm praying about it. And I'll start to read and all of a sudden something pops out of there and I'm like, whoosh. yes, yes, that's exactly what I needed for today. That's exactly what I needed to hear, God. And it encouraged me to stand up and to begin to face the storm and to call out God's name. That's what God is looking for. He says, you know what? When you're going through the hardest time in your life, begin to look for me. Call out to me. Call out to my name and watch what I can do in your life. I will put the wind in your sails and I will be the fire on your wood. Look to me. Look to God. The greatest encouragement comes from the one that knows the most. As players, I remember if we would get in a funk sometimes playing football or we weren't having a good time, man, we'd have the other students, come on, we can do this. You know, we'd buy it and they'd go off and you're like, yeah, yeah. But when you had a coach walk in and says, listen to me, I've seen you boys. I've seen you practice. I've seen you sweat. I know. And all of a sudden there's just something that rises up in you. You know what? I can do this. It's the same way with God. When God says, you know what, son? You can do this. I've seen you. I know who you are. I know how powerful you are. I know how weak you are. You can. All of a sudden, there is an encouragement that you will get, a fire that will build that nobody else can put out. Woo! That's all about him. Encourage yourself. We can stay positive through encouragement of others. And encouraging others spiritually and encouraging ourselves through God. Just call out to Him. Look for Him. Lord, we come to you tonight and I thank you so much. Father, I thank you tonight for everything that you do, how good and powerful that you are. And Father, I'm asking tonight that maybe there's someone in here that is going through a trial. Maybe there's someone in here that has got something going on in their life. And Father, they need a little bit of encouragement from you tonight. Father, maybe they need some people to gather around them, for people to call out with them and encourage them in the walk that they are walking. God, tonight I pray that you will hear us. I know that you will. God, strengthen us. Build us up from this moment. God, to face whatever it is that we're facing. 
Speak words of encouragement into our ears tonight, God. Father, let us hear from your throne. Let the Holy Spirit speak to us tonight. I'm going to ask if you're in here tonight. 